A good friend of mine just got flown off the mountains with a chopper in Chamonix because his blood oxygen level was down to 35%. I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about hape, haze and general mountain sickness. Hey guys, welcome to the high ground. My name is Fabio and today we're going to talk about hape, haze and acute mountain sickness. All three of those syndromes have to do with high altitudes and that's what we generally encounter in the mountains. So I found it worth to talk about them, what actually are they, what can we do against them and what can we do in order to prevent them. To start off, uh, let's briefly distinguish. Um, we have AMS, acute mountain sickness. That's the mildest form of altitude sickness. We have HAPE, high altitude pulmonary edema, which is a more severe form that generally affects the lungs. And we have high altitude cerebral edema, which is the most severe form of altitude sickness and that directly affects the brain. I myself was in the Swiss mountain guide course. Um, I had to take a break because of an injury, but I'll get back into that. Um, and I spent a lot of time in, at altitude in my life already. I was roughly for 200 days per year in the mountains and I saw a lot of people who were not well trained and not well acclimatized um, getting sick. I myself had an experience with AMS, so with the acute mountain sickness, um, the mildest form once. Um, that was on a climb in Chamonix, so the Mont Blanc range is the highest range in the Alps. And for me it was really like I was coughing a lot and I really felt weak and drained, but um, I could make my way down to the valley um, myself so I didn't need rescue or something like that so it was a very mild case and um, yeah I got quite lucky. Now my friend didn't get that lucky um, he slept at roughly 3800 meters in a mountain hut in a refuge and um, he couldn't even stand up anymore so they had to inject him with drugs and we will talk about them a little bit later um, get them onto the balcony of the hut. From there he got winched up into the chopper. Um, the chopper then landed on the glacier, took his climbing partner with him and um, the, the whole party was flown down to the valley. Um, my friend is still in the hospital now or by the time that you will see this video he is hopefully out but he has to at least stay for two days. And um, yeah, they measured his blood oxygen level with 35% um, in the valley. So generally normal should be between 70 and 100%. So he was really not in a, <laughs> in a good situation and I'm glad that they got him out. Now let's talk about the different syndromes, AMS, HAPE and HAZE, and um, what they actually are, how to prevent them, and um, if you have them, what you can do. Let's start with the mildest form with AMS and I will take this one pretty brief because it's not as severe as the other two. AMS is caused by the decreased air pressure and lower oxygen level at higher altitudes, like the others as well. The symptoms of AMS are general dizziness, nausea, vomiting, um, Patients generally feel pretty weak um, and they generally can't sleep very well. Now AMS, if you have the opportunity, then it is always recommendable to decrease altitude, so go down. Um, but it is not super life-threatening as long as it doesn't, it doesn't develop into hape or haze and you never know that, right? Um, but generally, in my experience, a lot of people, if they have AMS at the beginning when they get to altitude, after one to two days, they are a little bit better acclimatized and AMS will actually go away. Um, from 
the perspective of medicine. Um, often steroids are given in more severe cases of AMS. Um, but if that is the case, then you should really make sure that you can go down and evacuate. Um, if it is just a very uh, mild form of AMS, then yeah, you can just uh, toughen it out and continue climbing as soon as you feel better. HAPE is high altitude pulmonary edema. That means that your lungs start filling with fluids. Now, HAPE is generally caused by a variety of factors. Of course, um, very quick ascents. Um, physical exertion is a big part. Um, but there is also a little bit of genetic disposition for HAPE. So some people just get it easier. The symptoms are fairly easy to spot. They are more or less um, focused on the breathing system. So we, of course, have shortness of breath, a lot of coughing, um, chest pain, and general weakness. Uh, my friend told me that um, he actually had to take off his base layer on the hut because he felt that it only, already the base layer was compressing his chest so that he can't breathe. Obviously, the base layer didn't do that, um, but it was the feeling that he had. Now, to emphasize this, HAPE is a medical emergency. Although I said that HAPE is even worse, <laughs> yes, it is, but HAPE is still a medical emergency, and you should seek medical uh, attention, a higher level of care, ASAP. Um, generally, that means going down, um, decreasing altitude. That will already help often. Um, but even if you're down in the valley, it makes sense to still visit a hospital afterwards to make sure that everything with the lungs is okay. You can, of course, give drugs against it. Um, those are generally not something that is available to the um, spare time mountaineer, even mountain guides generally don't have that with them, but really only the guys from search and rescue. Although if you're on a bigger expedition in the Himalayas, etc., so the base camp dog will them have. Um, and they are generally nifedipine and sildenafil. Um, those are the two things that are generally given um, in cases of hape. And um, they will, they try to make sure that you don't get as much fluid in your lungs as, yeah, otherwise. Now, how can you prevent HAPE? Well, the easiest way to prevent HAPE is by really doing gradual ascents in the mountains. And I know that this is not easy in the times of uh, light and fast alpinism, um, or if you're doing bigger, bigger climbs, because you might do 2,000 meters, uh, six to 7,000 feet altitude gain in a day. Um, but for your body, that's quite a lot. Um, an important thing when it comes to other measurements that you can take, um, of course, you need to stay hydrated. That is a big point. And you should avoid alcohol or any sedatives. Maybe if you want to go climb on the um, the next day, then don't knock yourself off on the plane to uh, to Europe or to the Himalayas or wherever you're going, right? So stay clear of that stuff. And um, that's basically what you can do. Um, gradual ascents, drink enough, no alcohol and no sedatives. Here also important, um, we, we mentioned um, some, some drugs that people can give. Um, don't use them as a supplement for proper acclimatization, right? Um, now, there is a lot written about how to acclimatize for the mountains. This is a separate topic. Um, but that's just a word of caution that I want to give you that you shouldn't use any type of drugs to substitute your acclimatization. For the last and most severe form of altitude sickness, haze, high altitude cerebral edema. In a case of haze, um, fluids are building up in the brain due to the high altitude, low pressure and low oxygen levels. Classic symptoms of haze are um, dizziness, confusion, lethargy, 
ataxia, seizures, and finally a person will actually fall into a coma. So as you can see with all this stuff, um, it is even a little bit worse uh, compared to HAPE because with HAPE the physical abilities are limited, the physical abilities of the climber, but he is mentally still there, right? Um, with Hayes, the physical abilities are limited, but also the mental capacity to actually make good decisions isn't there anymore. And that's also what you hear if you read stories from the Himalayas, from high altitude climbing, um, that people start really acting not rationally anymore if they got haze. So you really need to have a close, close eye on them. The same for HAPE, even more for haze. Haze is a medical emergency and you should immediately try to go down in altitude and seek medical att attention, a higher level of care. Um, the classic drug that is given um, for, for haze is dexamethasone. Um, this can help for a bit. I know that uh, actually high altitude uh, mountaineers carry it with them um, as long as legally allowed. Um, but it is uh, really a, a last ditch effort. And the best thing is to try to get the person down the mountain as quickly as possible. The ways to prevent um, haze are more or less the same on how to prevent hape. Um, you should uh, acclimatize gradually, so don't go up too quickly. Um, drink enough, make sure that you stay away from alcohol, and uh, this is basically what you can do, with a big emphasis on really being well acclimatized. Of course, again, there is a certain element of genetic uh, predisposition for haze, and uh, some people just get it easier than other ones. Um, that's just something you will have to live with. Okay, so to summarize, um, we have acute mountain sickness, uh, we have the more severe form which is high altitude pulmonary edema, and we have the most uh, severe form which is high altitude cerebral edema. With the latter two, you should seek medical attention immediately. With the first one, it depends if it is a more or less severe case. You can toughen it out, but it's always smarter to play it safe there. Um, you can prevent all three of them by drinking enough and acclimatizing to the altitude that you're actually going to be at, although that's, I'm aware that that's not always possible. And yeah, the best treatment is always bring a person down. And with hape and haze, the person will, of course, need um, extended medical attention, bring them to a hospital, call search and rescue. Um, the drugs that I mentioned should only be given by experts, people who know what they're doing, um, and they're not a substitute for going down the mountain or proper acclimatization. I hope you found this video helpful. It was a brief overview on altitude sickness. Um, there is a lot more to know about this topic when we look at the literature, especially um, mountaineering medical literature, high altitude medical literature. And yeah, if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Generally, I'm doing um, outdoor and mountain videos on Monday and more general preparedness stuff on Thursday. This week it's the other way around. If you want to know why, check out Monday's video. Yeah, thank you for watching. I really appreciate the time you spent here and I'll see you next time.